today at steampunkchronicle.com is Dr. A. And it's funny, we've been talking here for a minute before we rolled camera, and I said, so, you know, tell me about the steampunk market. And he goes, steampunk? It's not exactly... And I'm looking at this thinking, clearly, I would call Clearly? It well, yeah, it, you know, within the genre of steampunk, but I, was, I don't really kind of do the steampunk circuit kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know, I, I guess the steampunk people like what I do and and, uh, and follow me, but it's kind of hard to tell like, on, with online. I mean, I kind of work, I'm, I live in the UK and I live out on the moors and I kind of spend 90% of the year working in my studio with no connection to the outside world at all and then I come to Atlanta or LA and it's just kind of ah, for like two days and then I go back to being a hermit. So it's kind of, I can't kind of gauge where my market is really. I mean, I know most of my big collectors are from the, uh, the sort of lowbrow art scene and the toy art, toy art scene and things and um, but yeah it's it's funny I, I don't deliberately target the steampunk audience at all with my product I just I just I just put it out there and well, let anybody go for it this guy right here this guy yeah this is, uh, this is Mr. Pumphrey and this is a standing mechanical perambulator um, this uh, we produce these with uh, Monkey King in LA mm -hmm. and it's it started out as a a long gestation period, about sort of. Most of the toys take mm, about two years. Would be a good turnaround time from the first idea to actually having the toy. Mm -hmm. um, this one was a bit longer. I did a, I did a sketch many years ago, which was kind of my my riff on a Jeff Soto Walker, mm -hmm. which was a toy that Je um, Jeff Soto had planned to to um, put out, which like never came to be because it was just way too complicated at the time. And it's become this mythic kind of not toy in the in the art toy scene. So I did I did a riff on that, um, which I then did as a as a as a sketch, as a print for DragonCon a few years ago. And then I was in LA and I ran into Patrick who runs Monkey King, which is a, a gallery and a store on Melrose in LA. And he said, I want to do, he works with like Luke Chu, Luke Chu and people like that. And he said he wanted to do a toy with me. And he, he was very specific, he said, I want to do a robot driving another robot. Can you do that? And I went, I've got a brilliant design that we're talking to make a great toy. And I showed him to and he went, that's going to be complicated. I went, yes, it is, but it's going to be cool. And so I just started drawing up the plans for him, and we, and we gave it to Dave Pressler, and he did a first turnaround sculpts for us, and, and uh, yeah, we went backwards and forwards, and we refined it, and, and made it work as a, as a three-dimensional piece. And yes, it was hellishly complicated and very expensive to make, and uh, <laughs> but we got there, and this was launched at uh, San Diego a few months ago. There's only a hundred of them made, uh -huh. and I have the last six. The last six. The last the six are here. They they pretty much sold out at San Diego. And uh, they're online, and I had a few APs online, and then these are the last ones I've got here. So it's a little Cthulhu, a little. It, uh, it, it uh, is. Well, that's L. the Frank thing. Baum, I mean, it's a little. Uh, yes. Well, they're, they're, those are all touchstones all, of mine, yeah. and, and Harryhausen and mm -hmm. things. I mean, I ran a, a gallery in Brighton in the UK for eight years called Arkham, which was specifically Lovecraft and horror, fine art illustration and sculpture. So I had like, loads of Lovecraft stuff. So there's there's like a big Lovecraft influence in what I do, which it kind of comes out. I mean, like with Stefan, who's one of the most popular characters. He's, yeah. And again with uh, Bella Della Mare, the, it's the tentacles. You can't get away from the tentacles, but I, I have this robotic spin on it. So. Tell me, uh, we discussed briefly pocket art and small pieces of fine originals. You've got a collection little, just of little original pieces, yeah. Mm -hmm. And you said you like the idea of doing originals in small, inexpensive scale to let everybody have access to fine art. Well, yes, absolutely. I mean, that's kind of the whole point of the toys is that, that they are... We, we call them toys because they're made with toy technology and toy production run um, factories in, in China. But basically, they're really fine art multiples. They are the 3D equivalent of an art print. They're like sculpture instead of a bronze, you know, I do bronze as well, but instead of a bronze, it's going to be a couple of thousand dollars. We can do this for a hundred bucks. Mm -hmm. So more people can have effectively a piece of artwork. And same, same with the, the drawings. When I do the conventions especially, I like to do a lot of original drawings. And I do, I do it all before I come, because sitting here and drawing for the weekend kind of, yeah, I don't get to see anything if I do that. So, But I, I pr deliberately price them low so that, that people can walk out. I mean, I, was, I start from like, $25 so you know that would be like 200 bucks in a gallery so but that's just a con only thing you know I don't, I don't really sell them online like that or anything it's, it's just if people are going to come and say hi and connect and I want them to take away a piece and enjoy it and love it so when you go back into hermit mode and yeah. we don't see you for nine or ten months how do people look at your art Where, where's your website um, my main website is mechtorians.com 
um, although it's a little behind because it's all me that does it. So I'm not a team. People think I'm a collective, weirdly, because of the stuff I put out. But no, it's all me. I do all the work. Um, but there's a lot of galleries have my stuff, so there's 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 things around, mostly in the states and Japan, and uh, so you can find you can find pieces around around the country in, in various galleries. But but make tour in, I have um, Instagram and Doctor underscore A on Instagram, and that's that's kind of I, I post there the most, I think. And uh, there's a Doctor A. Um, What's it called? Facebook. I was going to say Live Journal. It's not Live Journal anymore. No, it's Facebook. But um, yeah, I'm not very tech-minded, so it's kind of I'll, I'll stick stuff up on there. I put, I've started putting little bits of like sort of work in progress and things on there as well. So and just general kind of things I find interesting. So it's become a bit of a strange sort of middle ground. It's not purely a sort of marketing tool anymore. It's become a bit more kind of what's in my brain at the time. Yeah, <laughs> where, where, what I do and what I yeah. Excellent. Well, Dr. A for steampunkchronicle.com. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you.